President-elect Donald Trump is shaking it up by selecting Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to head human and, uh, or Health and Human Services. Trump is making good on his campaign promise to have Kennedy join his administration to disrupt the Washington norms. Griff Jenkins reporting now from D.C. with the latest Griff. And Harris, this may be the least surprising pick after Trump repeatedly hinted that he would enlist Kennedy to help make America healthy again. But already, RFK Jr. getting a harsh reception from some Democrat senators like Patty Murray posting this to X yesterday saying this could not be more dangerous. There's no telling how far an anti-vaxxer and fringe conspiracy theorist like RFK Jr. could set America back in terms of public health, reproductive rights, research, and more. But Kennedy says his skepticism on vaccines is being misconstrued by his critics offering this explanation on NBC. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take away anybody's vaccines. I, I've never been an anti-vaccine. If somebody, if vaccines are working for somebody, I'm not gonna take them away. People ought to have choice and that choice ought to be informed by the best information. And he's getting praise from a Democrat governor who was on the front lines during the COVID pandemic, Colorado Governor Jared Polis, saying this, I'm excited about the news. He helped us defeat vaccine mandates in Colorado and in 2019 and will help make America healthy again by shaking up HHS and FDA. Now, among the things we know Kennedy wants to do, if confirmed, address America's health and food habits, put a spotlight on obesity and heart disease, re-examine vaccine approvals, ban toxic chemicals and cut corporate influences. And for what it's worth, Harris, many of these goals are bipartisan, lest we forget First Lady Michelle Obama led the Let's Move effort to get America more fit. We'll see what happens. Harris? Griff, thank you very much. Uh, you know, Ben, it's your show is called The Verdict. What's your verdict on this? <laughs> I, I laugh at how they're all freaked out by him, and I just have to read this headline from Politico. This was back in 2008. Obama considers stars for the cabinet. President-elect Barack Obama is strongly considering Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to head the Environmental Protection Agency, a cabinet post, Democrat officials told Politico. So all of these Democrats that are, like, freaking out, like, oh, he's just, he's extreme. He, we can't have him. We can't trust him. I, sorry, shut up. Like, you guys are so filled with hypocrisy. It is, it's embarrassing. I also think that it's shocking how the media is reacting to all the things that Donald Trump said he was going to do that he's actually doing. Like, they can't believe that RFK is actually there. I'm like, did you not see them on stage? Did you not see the, 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 right. the fireworks go yeah. off when he brought him out there? Did you not see the crowd go crazy? And the same left that loved him, only because he bucked the system on asking questions about the COVID-19 vaccine. And a lot of people took a second look at him. A lot of people that were conservative took a second look at him. And they said, oh, this is interesting. This is a guy that's asking questions. If you go back and look at what he said, he only asked questions and they lost their minds. Well, look, I, I remember when he was in our studios and for the first time we sat down, Kennedy, and I asked RFK Jr., are, are you turning independent or Republican? No, I'm a Democrat. Yeah. He's yeah, a Democrat. No, he, he's very proud of being a Camelot Democrat, and he was hoping that that would appeal to more Democrats, and it might have if they had had an honest process throughout the primary season. <laughs> they, they didn't want a primary process. Um, so now this is what you're faced with. He touched a nerve with a lot of people, and he got people who weren't interested in politics at all to listen to his ideas. Good point. Um, I'm a little upset because when I heard that Kennedy was nominated to be held oh. to the services secretary, I thought it was me. And I was like, all right, everyone, pack up. We're going to Washington. Uh, so I had to call off the dogs. Um, but he is kind of all over the map. He has become somewhat libertarian in the last few years. That's what I thought. I yeah. hope he remembers what it means to be libertarian. And I'm talking about small L, not the party. Um, because I worry that someone with the collage of ideas that he has is going to use government oppressively. And that's not what we want in terms of our health. It's one thing to be a great role model and a great example. It's another thing to make sure that there is not fraud happening and we are not being actively poisoned surreptitiously. That's one thing. But to mandate what people put in their bodies in terms of food, that is a very slippery slope. Interesting.
Yeah, I would agree, but I would say I'm really surprised that some on the left are freaking out about this so much because I believe it's California who has led the crusade to ban certain chemicals, certain food dyes in food, in Skittles and in other products. Even furniture. Right. When you buy furniture, there are all sorts of, and most of them are coming from California. I don't know, maybe it's a good thing, but it's a lot of stickers. Right. So I'm, I'm really surprised that there are some that are so angry about this because that is part of his agenda is to look at the toxic chemicals, the things that are in our food. Why does Europe have better food than us? Why are there things sold here that are not allowed right. to be sold elsewhere? That's something that moms should care about, parents should care about, that the Obamas should embrace, to Griff's point, about moving and healthy school lunches. Why not take a look at these things? And for some, COVID was a religion. So I understand that you're poking at some people's religion when you talk about <laughs> what happened during the, the COVID <laughs> mandates and the vaccines. And I understand that some people are still very sensitive about that because they got so much wrong. But if you have someone who's willing to examine these things, take a look at things and maybe make big pharma a little bit uncomfortable follow the money i think that's okay i've never seen so many conservatives by the way now looking at following the money of big pharma and realizing like hey maybe we're actually being taken advantage of maybe they want to throw every single vaccine at you to make more money and we know how much money they made off the vaccines we also know that doctors were not honest with the american people because they were getting bonuses for how many vaccines <sighs> they were putting out there and the american people and mothers will not forget that well and i mean the whole thing and and you know you, you saw it up close. I mean, the whole thing with the cloth mask. Have you ever seen a surgeon go into surgery with no. a cloth mask? Right. And so when only Fauci yeah. kind of, and I think he was feigning it, when he said he wasn't sure about the, and that he was telling people to just use whatever they had, would he have gone yeah. into a disease environment with a cloth mask? I mean, it just didn't make any sense. Remember, Fauci told us we didn't need masks, and then he admitted he was only saying that because there was a shortage. Right. Look, RFK has been a big critic of Fauci. I think that's fantastic to have well, someone we all who are. sees through that. Yes. Uh, the food endeavor, that is a noble endeavor. As a mom, I hadn't given much thought to that until RFK really was vocal about it. I will say this, just coming from the other side, there are more traditional conservatives, social conservatives, who really wanted to see someone like Ben Carson at a HHS, someone who's avowedly pro-life, one in four federal dollars flow through HHS. But what I would say to you know, social conservatives, he will face questions about his abortion views during his, uh, his nomination process by pro-life senators. What I can say to those in that community who are worried, I can tell you this, the guy at the top, President Donald J. Trump, is the biggest advocate for the pro-life cause, the most pro-life president we have had. Amen. And I have comfort in that the ultimate boss is a guy named Trump. Yes. I just like the idea that maybe, maybe it's true. Great ideas can come from anywhere. I, I, right? I, and yeah. the threat of just asking questions in Congress right now, that's what they're all freaked out about on every one of these nominees. Mm. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.